Hello folks, this is Mike Prinky here, bringing you a Terrain of Magical Expertise technical update. Uh, I'm going to be going over a few changes we've made to our level editing and cutscene importing pipeline that uh, I think you're going to find very, very interesting. But first, a little bit of a status update of sorts, uh, to give you an idea of the reasons behind these changes that we've made. Um, so. We are at a point where we now have about half of the levels in the game done with markup, with monsters, treasure chests, and cutscenes. Uh, we have probably about three quarters of the monsters and battles in the game, including backer fights, uh, ready to roll. Uh, at least Nathan is in Chapter 3 and uh, working his way through it at a very brisk pace. Uh, and so we now have a gigantic bulk of scenes that we have to juggle in terms of debugging and uh, tweaking them, and a giant bulk of cutscenes that we have to edit with hundreds of lines of dialogue. So to give you an idea, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what our process looked like before, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it looks like now. So before we had our localization sheet, like this, which would include expression information, uh, you know, unique IDs for each line of dialogue, name of the character, and uh, the English text that's there by default, as well as placeholder columns for uh, all the other languages that we'd hope to be able to localize to. What we would do is we would bring it over here, convert it to a comma-separated value uh, spreadsheet, and then use an importer to convert it into something that looks like this. Uh, basically, it'll fetch all of the information necessary for a given character, hook it up so that it looks nice and pretty like this, and uh, yeah, what we would end up doing is to give it stage direction, we would add an action task like this. select from a list of actions that is positively overwhelming. There are many, many more actions available to put into this than uh, we ever want Chris to be able to touch. Some of them affecting like really important game systems like uh, managing the battle system. And then you would add a command like jump to transform, give it the character's name, give it the name of a location to move to. Uh, we can't necessarily select transforms that are in the level because this is a data file that uh, you know has to get placed in the level programmatically, so it doesn't necessarily have a destination by default. So what we do is we get them by name. In tileed, Basically, we're able to place these dummy objects called marks, and uh, the system can just grab these by name and tell them, oh, that's the spot that uh, that Alpha needs to move to, or that's the spot the Avatar needs to move to. That all probably looks and sounds pretty straightforward, but uh, then you start to think about the amount of re-importing that has to happen. Uh, what happens when a cutscene needs to have its dialogue updated, for instance. What happens when it needs to insert new dialogue in between different actions? Uh, you know, what happens when Chris has to add marks to a stage and re-import it over here? Basically, he has to hit process JSON and reprocess the level's uh, JSON file every single time, which means that he has to export the JSON over here then bring it in here, then get back to editing his cutscene. That's a lot to juggle. That's deceptively a lot to juggle. And a big problem with it is, this might seem really intuitive to me, uh, because I am very used to in-engine uh, editors like this. This is very familiar if you have had to manipulate Unity scenes. Chris doesn't really do any of that. Uh, he's been working entirely outside of the game engine basically this entire time, and mainly using the engine to review gameplay. 
uh, whereas Nathan and I and Scott, to a certain extent, are more the technical hands-on people for uh, this kind of implementation. So that's a lot of moving parts. That's a lot of procedures that Chris has to be able to juggle in order to import a cutscene. And as you might have guessed, I had to stop everything that I was doing over and over again every time he edited a cutscene in order to instruct him on everything from importing a level to marking up a level to uh, adding actions to cutscenes. So I went back to the drawing board a little bit. I put up with maybe about three days of that uh, where I was seriously losing traction on programming work before I sat down and revised the uh, system for marking up cutscenes inside of the localization sheets. So now, in addition to dialogue nodes, cutscenes inside of the uh, spreadsheet contain action lines. Basically, we've got the suffix action here, and that denotes a line that, instead of being read as a dialogue node, is read as an action task inside of Node Canvas. And what Chris is able to do is he's able to put commands separated by a uh, semicolon at the end that, that look a lot like programming language uh, kind of stuff. Things like player avatar, face alpha, move to this position, that kind of thing. All of these are now text commands inside of the cutscene. And we've actually got a cheat sheet of sorts right here that uh, contains a guide to all of the commands that Chris is able to use to mark up cutscenes. So now all he has to do is go in here, add these commands, and as he does it, he can go into the tileed files and add whatever marks and things that he needs in order for uh, the cutscene to work. And he can kind of just do those side by side, uh, kind of playing director as he is writing these cutscenes. Then, inside of Unity, instead of just processing the dialogue, now it's also processing those action lines and automatically turning them into action tasks like this one that uh, that have all of this information retrieved. So if I go ahead and delete this entire thing, go back over here and uh, bring open the cutscene importer, I can take week one, day three, hit the process button, And then after a couple of seconds, you see I've got everything back. It's even got the ability to process decision trees. So it will actually crawl through every line inside of the cutscene, looking for branches like this, and automatically break them into uh, branch A and B, and then sew them up at the end with whatever type of line uh, needs to come next. It will also insert the finish lines automatically based on these end lines that we've got written in. Anything with the suffix end end is going to be read as the finish point of a cutscene. So that in itself is massively, massively more convenient and makes it much, much easier to import cutscenes. I no longer have to sit down and fiddle with the import data. You can see that it uh, automatically gets the import data and just sets it up for me. Uh, more than that, though, it does the import data for the entire day that is contained within that localization sheet. So if you look at this, we've got week one, day three, week one, day four, day five, six, seven, and onward, 
this all comprises an entire chapter of the game's dialogue. And um, one day is basically like one fairly substantial level. You can see one day can have hundreds of lines of dialogue in them. Uh, and that's all just processed automatically. So if I look at the folder here, these cutscenes were all imported at once. Every single one of them when I hit that batch process loc file button. So now all I have to do is uh, when I want to handle day three, I can just hit that button and it'll reprocess day three. I can plug this in and process day four. Zoom. Day four is now processed. Hit it again for day five. Zoom. Day five is now processed. Day six. <laughs> day six is uh, a little bit short. And day seven. And that's kind of the chapter capstone right there. And now that is all done. That is an entire week's worth of cutscenes imported, complete with stage direction, inside of node canvas like this. Uh, just insanely, insanely fast. When Chris finishes all of the ones for week two, uh, I think he just has a few more of those to go. I can hit batch process on all of those and have them ready to roll. And then, because Chris has been editing these side by side, uh, I can just take and import the levels and have faith that uh, the cutscenes are all imported and it will grab them out of our asset database and stick them into the level as needed. Uh, but to help with that a little bit, I've also got a mass level importer. I've got... Uh, I've, I've still got to make the ability to create new levels from our JSON files uh, from scratch. That isn't something that's working yet, uh, because mm, for reasons that are a little bit tricky to explain, Unity's scene editing framework is a little... Uh, it, it doesn't expose everything you would like it to. But I can hit this button and have it reprocess any levels that we have already set up. So it'll just crawl through every scene in the game, hitting the re-import button on every scene info file, and then all of the marks, all of the cutscenes that need to be added in, uh, all of the enemies that have been added into them are automatically put in. <sighs> it's much faster. It goes through this bulk of material much, much faster and makes the bulk of what editing the game is something that you do inside of Tileed rather than something that you do inside of Unity. Uh, in Unity now, my main uh, concern is just making sure everything works, just running through the cutscenes and making sure that they look the way that they're intended to look uh, tweaking the behavior of like the move to command if characters are off their marks any. Uh, tweaking the behavior of the importer so that uh, objects inside of the map get placed more accurately. And so on and so forth. Um, so I have become almost completely systems oriented, barring a couple of typos or missed things that I find inside of a localization sheet. Um, and this process really now kind of works itself. To summarize what that process is, again, uh, to, to make it a little bit easier, basically, Chris edits these localization files, putting together the cutscenes, and uh, adding markup to the tile-ed levels. We then import the cutscenes, then we import the levels in that order because the levels are, uh, you know, strangely dependent on the cutscenes. And then um, the game works. 
And uh, on that note, we have the uh, scene flow set up between different days and chapters. Uh, the game state is stabilized in such a way that now we can jump from day one to day two to day three and see things in the world that are marked up for each of those days appear and disappear accordingly. Uh, and what's more, there is a flow to the player's desktop where they check their emails and uh, decide what tasks they're going to be doing inside of the terrain for that day. Ah, <sighs> that's, uh, that's quite a bit of stuff. Uh, that's, that's some of my, uh, proudest work in terms of streamlining the process for editing Terrain of Magical Expertise. It's, uh, now the type of system that really makes four people feel like 15. <laughs> so, um, on that note, I will be bidding you farewell. I will hopefully be giving you another update sometime in the near future with some demonstrations of, uh, the game in action. But uh, for right now, uh, I'll, I'll just be closing this out and uh, wishing you all a lovely Easter and uh, beyond. <laughs>